Good morning. Today is Thursday, February 2nd. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. The White House says President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy had a frank and straightforward dialogue yesterday on raising the nation's debt limit. NPR's Windsor Johnston reports the two leaders have agreed to continue talking. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says no agreements or promises were made during the meeting, but that he and President Biden would continue the conversation. We have different perspectives, but we both laid out some of our vision of where we'd want to get to. And I believe after laying both about, I can see where we can find common ground. The White House has repeatedly said that it will not negotiate over the debt ceiling, warning that an extended stalemate could result in the U.S. defaulting on its debt for the first time ever. Congressional Democrats, meanwhile, accuse some Republicans of using the showdown as a bargaining chip to cut government spending. Windsor Johnston, NPR News, Washington. President Biden is getting ready to direct federal agencies today to provide more flexibility to federal workers applying for leave. The order comes on the 30th anniversary of the passage of the Family and Medical Leave Act. Officials in Ukraine say a Russian missile strike on an apartment building in the east of the country has killed at least three people and wounded 20 others. NPR's Frank Langfett reports from Kyiv, last night's Russian airstrike occurred in the Donetsk region. Donetsk police said an Iskander K missile struck the building in the city of Kramatorsk before 10 p.m. local time. Images on social media showed police officers climbing around a mountain of smoking rubble, searching for bodies and survivors. Last month, another Russian missile destroyed an apartment building in the city of Dnipro, killing 45 people. Ukrainian officials insist these are deliberate strikes designed to terrorize people. But analysts say at least some appear to be errant missiles. In the case of Dnipro, Russia used a missile with a 2,000-pound warhead designed to hit aircraft carriers. Analysts say it has an unsophisticated radar system and isn't designed to discriminate targets in dense cities. Frank Langford, NPR News, Kyiv. Energy giant Shell has reported its highest annual profits in more than a century. Fellow Marx reports from London that's after energy prices in the UK soared thanks to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Shell's profits for 2022 almost hit $40 billion and were twice as high as the previous year amid a roiling political debate about further targeted taxation measures on energy company profits. Opposition parties are demanding Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's Conservative government extend a subsidy program for household energy costs funded by corporate profits, though Shell said it did not expect to pay any UK tax this year. Villa Marks reporting. In the U.S., the National Weather Service says an ice storm pelting much of the south will begin to ease today. But ice storm warnings are still up for Texas. More than 400,000 customers don't have power in that state. Australia will remove the late Queen Elizabeth from its $5 bill. Rachel Bongiorno reports it's the last remaining Australian banknote to feature the British monarchy. The Reserve Bank of Australia announced that it would create a new design that honours the culture and history of Indigenous Australians, rather than replace the portrait of the Queen with King Charles III. The British monarch remains Australia's head of state, but since the Queen's passing, there has been renewed debate around a republic. It's been almost 25 years since Australia voted against becoming a republic through a national referendum. But since taking office in May, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese created a new position, an Assistant Minister for the Republic, which suggests another referendum may be on the cards. The central bank said it would consult with First Nations communities on the new design. For NPR News, I'm Rachel Buongiorno in Sydney. Water officials in California say the state's snowpack is double what it normally is this time of year. But NPR's Nathan Rott reports the new findings come with a warning. The state snowveyors continue to find deep snow in California's mountains after last month's damaging series of atmospheric rivers. The storms produced by the river-like bands of high-level moisture caused flooding, power outages and more than 700 landslides. The deluge did help to alleviate the state's long-standing drought, California water officials are warning that it's still early in the state's wetter season and that a couple of months of drier and warmer conditions could cause the snowpack to shrink, increasing concerns about the state's limited and tapped water reserves. Nathan Rapp, NPR News. This is NPR.